Welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. Are you a survivor of abuse or other trauma? Are you tired of feeling stuck, silent, and stressed all the time? This is the podcast people from all over the world join in to learn exactly how to stop suffering and start living with more inner peace and joy. Are you ready to eliminate suffering from your life and transform from a survivor to thriver? And congratulations, you are in the right place. Let's get started. Hey, welcome back to the Survivor to Thriver show. In the last episode, I was reflecting with you on the idea that attachment leads us to believe that we can self-sufficiently provide for ourselves. Now, I can give all the world's happiness to myself or to my loved one. Attachment says, I will give all the world's happiness to my love. In my case, my love was me. So I was led to believe by my attachment that I can give all the world's happiness to me. And I shared with you some of the unfortunate side effects of this belief. Because this kind of belief is an attitude of arrogance that's born uh, out of arrogance. And Unfortunately, this kind of arrogance is not grounded in the reality of how things work in our world and in our lives. You know, this kind of arrogance leads us to believe that we are self-sufficient. And it does so at the le- at such a, an extreme level that we deny the interconnected, interdependent nature of our being. And that's the real problem, right? Because it's not that, you know, I'm, I mean, it's, you know, it's, there are certain ways where I can say, certain contexts in which I can say I'm self-sufficient, And it's very true. It's very accurate. But it's context dependent, right? The statement, the statement of I am self-sufficient is true in limited context. And arrogance takes the this idea and applies it at a generalized level, at a level that is, you know, where it's out of context. And it becomes dysfunctional because of that, because it's no longer aligned with the nature of reality. The reality that we are, in fact, interconnected, interdependent beings. So I highlighted for you in, in the last episode some of the key problems that emerged in my life as a result of this uh, attitude of arrogance. However, there's one more um, issue that I want to highlight this uh, 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 like a problem that can really emerge as a result of, of this kind of arrogant attitude um, and it can create huge damage in our relationships and the quality 
of our relationships, right? And so it's very important to, to be aware of it. What am I talking about? I am talking about bad pride. Bad pride defined as thinking, believing that I am better than someone else because of my abilities, because I of the wealth I have, because of whatever reason you might come up with to believe, to think that you are better than other people. You know, it's uh, for me, in my experience, arrogance and bad pride are very closely connected. They, in fact, go hand in hand. It's like you, you could start out with arrogance and before you know it, you have stepped over the, the line, the thin line that divides arrogance from bad pride, or it could be the other way. You could start with bad pride and end up with arrogance. But either way, you know, they're so closely connected. They really go hand in hand. And so in my case, of course, um, as I was sharing with you, the whole process started with me convincing myself that I could be self-sufficient in my ability to help myself, in my ability to um, achieve inner peace and healing for myself. Not only that I could do it, but uh, like in terms of potential that I could strive towards, but I had to convince myself into believing that it was in fact the case. Because for me, the alternative was just not acceptable. So I started out with this, okay, okay, all right, I, I can help myself, I'm strong, I'm capable therefore able to help myself, therefore, you know, justified in my belief, in my attitude of self-sufficiency. And I did a lot, a lot of my behaviors and uh, so, so forth were directed towards reinforcing this belief in my self-sufficiency, right? And it doesn't take long before... You know, it's like before even I knew it, I, I, you know, I'd have to go connect with my heart and check with my heart about, oh my God, when did I even make this transition from just arrogant belief in my self-sufficiency to bad pride? Because I cannot remember just reflecting uh, from my mind on this, uh, but in any case, at some point, I made this transition, and not, so not only now am I believing in my capacity and my ability to be self-sufficient in a delusional, delusional way, but I'm now comparing myself to other people, looking at other people who do reach out for help and support, or who do allow themselves to be vulnerable, in front of others and ask for help and so forth. And I look at them and I perceive them as weak. And I perceive them as not as good as me. So I'm better than them. And you know, so that gives a further boost to my ego and allows me to feel even better about my own arrogance. It's just this like really vicious cycle. You know, like once you once you have not only arrogance but you also have bad pride because one reinforces the other. 
you know? And now once you have the both arrogance and bad pride, oh my God, what's going to happen to your relationships? What can happen to your relationships? Uh, not very good things at all, you know? So I, I started, um, it started impacting my relationships, you know, uh, in all kinds of like really negative ways where I became very judgmental, you know, of, of other people where even, my gosh, even in the context of, um, as I started learning, about, you know, delving into the study of religion and spirituality and you're learning like all this information and all these like great ideas and principles about kindness and compassion and helping others and you know sometimes you just really become so invested in in sort of seeing ourselves in certain ways that we don't even realize what kind of, how we are being inconsistent with, uh, you know, other aspects of our beliefs and other aspects of our behavior. So I actually became pretty dogmatic in, in my, in the way that I was even, um, starting to practice, um, and understanding the teaching of the uh, of my faith you know so that like um, I would not only like you know so like once I, I will give myself enough credit to say that I was open to the extent that I was willing to learn from different sources and I actually kind of prided myself on on just how much effort I put into looking into different points of views and and then making up my own mind about things. And unfortunately, you know, like once you once you have arrogance and you fall into a trap of bad pride, even good qualities can take on a really negative um, um, character so it's like okay so on the one hand I'm like priding myself like I'm feeling like oh it's like it's a really good quality that I'm like looking at different perspectives and making up my own mind making my own decisions but on the other hand because of my bad pride because of my arrogance what happened is that once I made my decision I was like my decision is the best decision. You know, my decision is the right decision. And anyone who didn't agree with my version, with my understanding of whatever that issue was, they were wrong. They were wrong. They were stupid. Their, 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 their opinion didn't, uh, that it was weak, that they were not... Um, they were, it was just wrong, bad. And I was right. I, my reasoning was better. Like all that kind of, you know, uh, prideful thinking and arrogant thinking would take over. And so then it was like my way or the highway. So up to a point, I was like open and willing to learn and engage. But after that point, it was like my way or the highway. And so when you take on this kind of attitude of I'm better than you, I know better than you, it's my way or the highway, I mean, come on. How can you have healthy relationships with those kinds of attitudes in your life? Right? I mean... When somebody treats you in this kind of way, just think about it. Like, you know, we, we all have this, um, all, pretty much all cultures, all faith traditions, spiritual traditions have this golden rule in common. This idea that 
we need to treat others the way we would want to be treated. To, you know, love for others what you love for yourself. To, do you love when somebody treats you with that kind of condescension or that kind of attitude of my way or the highway or where they make you feel like you know you're just stupid or wrong no of course not and how do you feel about those people who make you feel like that or who think like that or who behave like that I'm sure they're not very really nice friendly feelings <laughs> right so um, it absolutely has a very negative impact on our on the quality of our relationships and um, I I could give you more specific examples of specific relationships in my life uh, where this emerged and my gosh um, especially with my little sister um, Things got pretty, pretty bad because she was actually one of the few people in my life because she was my younger sister that I felt really free to sort of lord things over her, to tell her that she was wrong and that I was right. And actually, as the older sister, I had this, this uh, sense of justification almost, um, and taking that kind of a position and being, you know, having the sense of, like, I have the right to tell her what she should think because I'm older, so I know better because I'm older. And because she's younger, she must listen to me. And if she doesn't listen to me, she's wrong, she's bad, you know. And she was one of the very few people in my life that I had, that I was able to take on that kind of attitude uh, with because she was younger than me whereas with pretty much everyone else in my life I was younger than them so you know applying in, 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 in my culture Indian Pakistani traditional culture you know, we have pretty strict um, behavior codes of who relates to whom and how you know and particularly like the way you relate to people who are younger than you is different from how you relate to your peers and is different from how you relate to your elders. So uh, with my elders, I basically just, whenever I felt um, like I just retreated behind my walls and retreated behind my silence. And so my elders... For the most part, I didn't argue with them. I didn't, um, you know, try to prove myself right and them wrong or anything like that. Because, you know, to be honest, I just didn't want to have to deal with that kind of drama. So actually my image with pretty much all the elders in my life was like of this quiet, well-mannered girl, girl. But little did they know all the... <laughs> revolution and uh, not so quiet, well-mannered thoughts and feelings that were um, raging behind the scenes in my mind, you know? So, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and stop talking <laughs> on this issue right now. And uh, we will pick up where I'm leaving off uh, tomorrow. But tomorrow, I promise, we will begin to talk about solutions to this problem, okay? So tune in tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow's episode because, you know, you don't want to miss out on what the solutions are here. And in the meanwhile... I wish you lots of peace and joy, as always. And also a final reminder to please go on iTunes and leave the show a five-star rating so that it becomes easier for other people to find it. 